Stephen Fennec from Tech Guide here, and today we're talking about the new Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. The first flagship phone of the year has been released by Samsung. They fired the first shot in the battle for the year, and we're going to see, of course, a follow-up from other brands, including Apple, later in the year. But the Galaxy S23 Ultra is the flagship device, the top-of-the-line device. There is, of course, the S23 with a 6.1-inch screen. There's the S23 Plus, which has the 6.6-inch screen. And here is the the S23 Ultra with the 6.8 inch display. Also comes with the S Pen, don't forget, same as last year, really good stylus, stores away in the phone here. So for those of you who love writing on the screen, taking notes, the S23 Ultra can still provide that. So it's kind of absorbed all the features that we used to call the Note. I was a big fan of the Note phone. Now that all those features are now included, not only the S Pen, but also now you're getting the great camera as well. Previously, the Note was great for productivity, but didn't have the, as good a camera as the Galaxy S series. Now you've got all the bells and whistles in one device. Let's talk about the design. The, uh, the colors and the actual shape of the S23 Ultra has slightly altered. You can see this is the S23 Ultra. I'm gonna compare it now to the S22 Ultra. You'll notice that of course the green color is a little bit different. This is the S23 Ultra right here. S22 Ultra on this side. Now, almost look identical. If you take a closer look at the cameras, you'll notice that the S23's cameras are actually larger. They actually extend further down the device and they actually, each lens looks a little bit larger than last year's devices as well. So see how the, uh, the, the lenses extend a little bit further down on the S23 Ultra. So if you, uh, I did try to fit the case for the S22 Ultra on the S23 Ultra, but it wouldn't fit because of those lenses. The other design change is also, you'll notice that the edges, so here's, here's the, this is the S23 Ultra right here. You'll notice that the edges are slightly flatter than last year's models. You can probably just tell here, there is a, a flatter edge, whereas the S22 Ultra had a, a round, a completely rounded edge whereas the S23 Ultra has a flatter edge. You can probably see that here, the, uh, the, the flatter edge right there. Now, the reason Samsung gave for that, they said they wanted more screen space, so more screen real estate. So rather than having the curved screen on the S22, so that sort of reduced the screen real estate by a millimeter on each side, they decided to go with the squared edges so that the screen would give you, there'd be a couple of millimeters on either side of the screen to use the S Pen. So design-wise, not a huge difference, but uh, even on the colors, this was the, the premium green last year, and this is this year's green, so they've not just given you the same colors, they've, they've also changed that as well. Now, another thing we need to talk about, of course, is this is a flagship device. So you've got to remember that this is powered by a Snapdragon Gen chip designed just for Galaxy. Now, we know Apple make their own chips for their iPhones, naturally their own silicon working with their software and hardware makes for a good result. In Samsung's case, they've got their very own Galaxy chip from Snapdragon as well. And worldwide, I think last year there was some, so was some had the Snapdragon chip, others had the Exynos chip. I think that's what it was called. But everywhere, all around the world, we're getting the Snapdragon design, the Snapdragon chip on board. Now, why is that important? Well, the chip has created not only the performance and the power, but also created this amazing efficiency as well. I'll talk a bit later about the battery efficiency, but in terms of getting things done, speed, power, performance, it is really snappy, slightly faster than the S22. So it really does give you that flagship performance, whether you are playing the latest high-end games. I played I played Call of Duty on, on, this, on this device. And what I did, I actually paired a PlayStation controller to, to the device and was able to play. I'll see if I can find uh, Call, of, Call of Duty was the, the game that I was playing. And I had a paired 
a paired controller from the PlayStation. So I was able to play the Call of Duty game on here with, and controlling it with the PlayStation 5 controller. So that did give me that sensation that I was actually playing my PlayStation, but on, on this size screen. And that really demonstrated the power and the performance of the processor, which is uh, really demonstrated easily with this game. But also, you got to remember, if it does perform well playing games, it's going to easily power through any other tasks that you throw at it as well. So that's big tick in my book for the processing power uh, and the whole overall performance has been very impressive. But you know what? The feature that everyone wants to know about and find out more and to try for themselves is the camera. The camera this year has gone up on the Ultra to 200 megapixels. So you're getting uh, not only great resolution, but also great performance in low light. There's even an astrophoto mode that I tried. It wasn't too bad, but really the camera has taken a step up in the, in the S23 Ultra. Okay, let's take a closer look at the cameras here. So you've got, there's a 12 megapixel lens. There's a 200 megapixel camera here. So 12 megapixel ultra wide, 200 megapixel wide, and, a, and two 10 megapixel cameras. There's a telephoto, two telephotos, one that's capable of three times optical zoom, one that's capable of 10, uh, of 10 times optical zoom as well. So, the idea of having a 200 megapixel camera in your pocket serves a couple of purposes. Well, number one, you can take a really large image. So if you go into the settings, you actually can choose whether you want to take your photos in the 200 megapixel mode or whether you want to stick with stick with the 50 megapixel shooting shooting mode as well. So it allows you then, so if you're shooting in, in 200 megapixel all the time, your photos are going to be quite large and that's going to take up your memory. So for your, for your regular shooting, you can bring that down to 50 megapixel. Uh, but if you are shooting at 200 megapixel, the beauty of that is that you can capture quite a big image and if, if that's something you want to print out, I don't know how many people print out their phone, uh, their photos from their phones, but if you do, you can actually print out quite a large print. But I think the, the other benefit is being able to crop into an image. Now I'll show you an image I took today. This is a shot of this is a shot of the 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 Glebe Island Bridge. So you this is a 200 megapixel image. So I can now you can see that's one of the benefits. You can actually crop in and still have quite a sharp image. You can see that that's actually quite sharp. You can see even the detail in the flag at the top there. So this is me cropping in. So this is going out, that's, 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 that's no zoom at all. That, that's just the 200 megapixel image. So it does allow me to crop in and still have a, a really sharp image. So that's the other benefit of having, having a, that 200 megapixel, you can actually crop in and still have quite a sharp image as you saw from that little demo there. But the, the other feature, you gotta remember, this phone has a, a 100 times zoom. So it's its combination optical and digital zoom. And you can only, interestingly, you can only zoom, 100x zoom on a 50 megapixel image. I, I thought you might be able to achieve that with 200 megapixel, but no, it only works when you're in the 50 megapixel size and does allow you then to still get that nice zoom. And what I like about it too is that when you are zooming in on that object, it does show you the small reference of where you are on that image. So you can actually handheld still take a good photo. I'm gonna look for a, I was in San Francisco for the launch of the, of the Galaxy S23. And I did take a shot of Alcatraz. So I was, I was standing, standing right on Fisherman's Wharf, looking, looking out at the, at the island. So here we can see this is, there's Alcatraz right there. This is shot from Fisherman's Wharf. So this is just demonstrating the, the power of the zoom. So that's, that's no zoom, that's, that's X, 1x zoom. So it's a zero zoom on it. This is slightly closer. You can see that it's still picking up quite a bit of detail there. We get in even closer. So look at that. That's taken from the shore. That's taken from Fisherman's Wharf. That's not taken from a ferry. That's from the shore. 
So that, that's getting up there. Now, this is the full 100x zoom. That's the tower that you saw here. That's full zoom, handheld, by the way, of Alcatraz. So that really does show you the power of the zoom. And you can see just from those images, and, and I'll publish these images on Tech Guide, on my review on Tech Guide as well, so you can see them even closer. You can still see those images are still quite sharp, despite being full 100x zoom. The other images were like 30x, 60x, up to all the way up to 100x. You can still see quite a bit of detail in those images. That, that's really impressive. So I think what Samsung wants to provide the customer is a no compromise camera. So you're able to shoot from a long distance and still get a good image. Even in low light situations, you are also able to capture some amazing images as well. And that's thanks to a new technology called adaptive pixel technology. So basically it's a binning technology. So the pixels can actually can combine. So 16 can combine into one. So it drags a lot more light into the sensor. Uh, I did take some astro images that I'll show you. Uh, these were set up on a tripod. Now, the idea behind these is to have a, a extended uh, extended uh, shutter, open the shutter, so have an extended exposure of the night sky. But it also did demonstrate that uh, outside, it did, it did pull in all this light as well. So kind of two birds with one stone here when uh, I tried this last night. Now, I did this. I had to set this up on a tripod. You gotta remember that to, to get a decent image that's a long exposure, you can't just do that handheld. You really need to use you really need to use a, a tripod. So here's here's a shot of the night sky from my place, and you can see the stars in that image. See you can see Orion's belt right there. This actually was a handheld image. I can't believe that I held my held it that close, held held it that still for so long, but this is just taken, I think it was like a three second exposure of the night sky. So it really, it really did uh, impress there. But there are other images here that I took. Uh, you can see just from how, the, how much light that it pulls into the sensor. Now this outside was, it looks like, that's the side of my house there. It looks like there's a light shining up that wall. That's actually pitch dark. There was no light, hardly any light at all, and it still managed to light up the night sky. It even took that, see the cloud is actually quite prominent in that image as well. So uh, in low light situations, the Samsung S23 Ultra is also gonna come to the rescue. They were also semi-astro photography shots. I'm a big astro photographer with a telescope. Of course, I get the magnification and I get, I've get i got a mount that can actually account for the rotation of the earth so that I get these great exposures and good shots. But if you just wanted to take the shots of the night sky, it does allow you to do that. So if you're in a, like oh, I'm taking this in, in under city light conditions. So if you do go out to the country and you put this on a tripod, you will actually capture amazing shots of the Milky Way thanks to that longer exposure. So there's a night mode and then you can adjust the exposure time to take uh, longer, longer shots. So what it does, it takes lots of shots in that time and stacks them together. So rather than keeping the shutter open for 10 seconds or however long you want to do it, it actually takes those little shots and then combines them uh, so that it stacks those images, which is a similar thing that astrophotographers do. They stack images to create those great images of the night sky and those deep sky objects. So Samsung is also using that as well. So camera, Massive tick on the camera. It's, it's, it's probably now the benchmark for, for a smartphone camera in terms of the megapixel power, the ability to shoot in low light, that astrophotography feature. Also portrait selfies too. There are some great shots. Uh, I took some shots of myself actually uh, in the, the selfie portraits now. It's like high dynamic range now in those images. Because selfies are important, of course. You want to look good in your selfies now with the new selfie camera on the S23 Ultra. You can do just that. Moving on to the battery. Now, the battery is a very important, uh, it's important that you get decent lifespan out of the battery and usage in my use of the phone. I've been using this for the last couple of weeks now and I'm getting nearly two days of battery life. And that is using this as my camera, as my phone, I'm browsing, I'm doing everything I normally do, checking email, social media, you name it. 
it's it's almost two full days of battery life and this is as a 5000 milliamp hour battery so that uh, you know that that's the same as last year's capacity but what is do you remember I was telling you about the new chip the Qualcomm for Galaxy chip that's created that amazing power efficiency so even when you're using it for photography for playing games doing those all those high end applications for work whatever productivity whatever you're doing this will get you through the day easily a day and a half if not two uh, and normally it would be for me a day and a half and i also had a, a smart watch the galaxy watch 5 connected to it as well so i was getting notifications to the watch so overall battery life massive improvement as well like not, not massive over the s22 but uh, in terms of a flagship phone with a 6.8 inch screen i think you're doing really well on the battery life here now let's talk price now the galaxy s23 ultra is starts at 1949 australian dollars now that's a hundred dollars more expensive than the s22 but what samsung has done they've actually increased the base memory so they've doubled the base memory now so what you're getting is kind of the same price as last year because last year if you had to pay a little bit extra to get that memory you're actually paying the same price basically as you did today so price wise starts at 1949 Aussie dollars and then goes up depending on how how much storage you want as well you can go all the way up to one terabyte of storage so that's the s23 ultra uh, goes on sale this week and a question I often get in conclusion uh, I just want to answer a question that I have been asked fairly often in the last couple of weeks since this was announced if I have an S22 Ultra, is it necessary? Should I upgrade? Well, that's a that's a, a question that you can only answer yourself. Whether you really want to jump up to the better camera, slightly better performance. I think personally, if you've got an S22 Ultra, I'd wait. I'd wait. I don't think there's an urgent need to upgrade. On the other hand, if you're coming from an S20, an S10, an S9, then no better time to jump up to the latest and greatest. Of course, you've got to remember there's the S23 and the S23 Plus, which are also available this week. The S23 starts at $1,349. The S23 Plus starts at $1,649. Not everyone wants the, the flagship, the, the, the top of the line model. There's a lot of people who prefer a smaller screen so uh, me personally I'm a big screen guy it's uh, go big or go home on the screen and I wanted all the bells and whistles including that S Pen too I'm a big fan of the S Pen that only comes with the S23 Ultra you can read our complete review on techguide.com.au thanks for watching